Closed captioning for sport fishing on the fly is brought to you by The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. Spokane Lake is located in the Spokane Valley in the Selkirk Mountain Range in southern BC. And what you get here is not so much the size of the fish or the number of fish, it's the quality of fish. We're fishing for, for big rainbows and dollies that, that feed in these creek mouths. But the average fish is like this one here. And it's not a big rainbow, but they're fun to catch and you get plenty of them. The beauty of the Snowcan Lake is really the surrounding area. The Selkirk Mountain Range, Snowcap Peaks, it's the end of June. And that's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander Reels, Precision Reels, The Frog Boat, Inspired by Nature, Ingenious by Design, and Rio Products, Specialists in Fly Lines, Leaders, and Tippet Materials. up for everybody and show them off. Oh yeah. And that was on the uh, big streamer? No, I'll show you what it is. Oh, okay. I got out of your box there was a black looking type of woolly bugger deal. Oh nice fish. Dolly Those dollies are nice. Oh yeah, big fly. Okay. Nice, oh, a nice little dolly, yeah. These fish get up to 18 pounds in this thing. This is just a baby. 18 in here. Yeah. Well, we're doing the night fish, so maybe we'll get some. Nice, let's see that fly again. Hold that up for everybody. Looks oh, like yeah. it's got some tungsten eyes on it. It's marabou. Nice. Nice pattern for dolly. Let's get some more. Cool. Right on. Fish falling here? Yeah, kind of warming up the cast in here. See, you need it. I got the little 24-incher. There you go. Oh, there's another one. Smaller. Is there? I wonder if I could pick it up. Gone. Yeah. Jeez, yeah, I mean, big fly. Casting that big fly. We just got out here. It's a real nice morning. Supposed to be sunny most of the day, maybe a little cloud later on, but it looks really good. Well, they're not hitting it. Let me try the bulldog. I'll put on the bulldog and see. Well, we're fishing near the creek mouths today. What we're going to do is hit every creek mouth possible around the Slocan Lake. It's just a beautiful lake, big water, 
big fish. Whoa, this isn't a very big fish, but he is fighting awesome. Got a five weight rod, and that's what we're going to be using today. With some intermediate sinks, maybe some fast sinks, some dry fly a little later. This guy here, he's not that big. He feels to be, you know, that 14, 15, maybe 16 inch range. But holy cow, we're just starting off by fishing the cliff area. Got a whole bunch of cliffs behind us, and we're working some some woolly buggers along the cliff bank, and this guy just smacked it. Fast retrieve, really fast retrieve. There he is, there he's not very big, but what a fight. Bring him up here, sure, buddy. Right? The little guy. Yeah. He really, he really wanted that. There he is there. Little guy. Not very big, but nice little silver fish. There he goes. Wow. Well, we just got out on the water, working the cliffs. We're going to be working some creek moles today. It's going to be a very interesting day, mainly because it's big water here on the Slocan River, or Slocan Lake. Real big water. We've probably got about 60 miles of water we're going to try to cover. So it should be an interesting day. So stay tuned. Well, there's another little guy. We've got a few hits in here, and what we're doing today on the Slocan Lake is hitting all the creek moles. We're going to work some cliffs. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to work out in front of all these creek moles. We've probably got about 13 to 15 creek moles to hit. And what happens is these small rainbows stack up in the creek moles, along with some bigger rainbows out further. But the big thing is the big dollies that can sit in here. You can get some dollies up over 10 pounds sitting in these creek moles that follow these little rainbows in to eat. So I've got a little rainbow on right now. I've been fishing a woolly bugger. I'll show you this little guy. He's, I'm just going to flick him off because he is small. Well, again, a little 12 inch rainbow. Need to big bug. Oh, there he goes. Got off. So what we're casting today is I've got the bulldog on. One of my brother's patterns. It's a real nice uh, name to after him because he uses it all the time. We're going to cast in. I'm going to show everybody a little bit later how we're doing this. Casting into the creek mouth with an intermediate sink line. Letting the fly sink down over the little gravel beds that have built up. And hopefully we can pick up some of these big dollies and catch a whole bunch of these nice little rainbows. A lot of fun, this kind of fishing. Because you never know what you're going to get. Could be big, could be small, you just never know. And it is cool this morning. It's a very cool morning. I think there's quite a few there that I've seen. Quite a nice fish, you know. Yeah. Seem to be hitting pretty hard too. I'm a little deeper than a heavier sink on. Seem to matter. That's a little cute, pretty, <laughs> pristine rainbow. Oh yeah, but it's fun out here. It's such it's beautiful fun. scenery, and you oh, can't beat it. So relaxing. Just to pick up even these small fish, and, like you say, the scenery and. Just out here is really nice. Oh boy, and he's just gone. He's gone. I know I, I noticed a few more sitting out here in this creek mouth too. Yeah. So we probably got good odds we might catch a few more. Okay. That's right. Very nice. Very nice fish. He's fighting quite well. That's crazy. On the really fast strip. That's another thing we're having to do. Is we've been working the bottom trying to get the big dollies. Haven't seen it yet, they'll move in eventually. But it's amazing on how fast the strip I'm using. I was bringing that across as fast as I could near the top and this rainbow hit it. Again, nice little guy, nice little boat. You know, that uh, that normal size, kind of a 13, 14 inch range. Nice little rainbow, nice little Sulcan River rainbow, or Lake rainbow. There we go. There it goes. Wow. So again, we still got the woolly buggers on real fast strips across the top. We worked the bottom trying to get the big dollies. Not much going on yet. I mean, it's just we just got out here. So if you're not having hits on the slow retreats, pick up the retreats. Seems to be working. 
got another one. We just got here. You landed the first one. Real nice. We've been working this hole for a little while, but uh, not that long. And uh, this is what the results were. Another small rainbow, mind you. But still nice. Oh, a really nice so, fish. Thinny as well. Yeah, they are pretty thin, aren't they? Really thin. There's a lot of fattening up to do. Well, it is spring, so. It is spring. And there he goes. There he goes. Not a bad fish. Oh, keep working it. Keep working it. Run the wet line through there. Whoa! Yeah! We got into one of the big dollies. I don't know how big he is. I saw him. He looks about. I don't know, he looked about five to six pounds. I'm not sure, but. Oh, yeah. Look at him. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Guess what it is? It's a big squawfish. Look at it. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's what else you can catch in here. Big squawfish. I thought I finally had a big dolly. So big there it goes. I gotta keep trying. I'm down deep enough catching those big squawks. In the zone. <laughs> Way to go. We've got a whole bunch of fish out here too. We're noticing a lot of the suckers and actually yellowfin suckers sitting on the bottom where we think they're spawning on these beds. I cast one down there and I actually had a sucker eat my fly. So we got rainbows, we got suckers, we got everything in here. That was a nice bowl. That's more like it. That's a little better size. Let's see if we can get a couple more like that. Look at that. Look at them down there. So now look at these. Look at these two rainbows. Look at the size of that rainbow. Oh, getting nice and warm out now. The sun's out. All the clouds have gone away. We've taken off the parkas because it was cold this morning. And more little guys. You know, we've uh, we've had a couple of nice dollies. The way got a nice dolly. I had one on and lost it. And we're getting lost in these little rainbows, which is still fun. I mean, look at the beautiful surroundings we're in. We're in the creek mouth. Just a gorgeous day. And we're getting lots of these little fish. I'm just gonna hold this guy up here. Everybody wanna we'll flick him off. There he is there. Yeah, just a, just a little rainbow. There are many different streamer patterns available for fly tires, and this is another great one. It's called the silver smelt. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. We use a size 10 streamer hook, that's the hook, some 6 aught red thread to tie with, some red pheasant rump for the tail, some silver tinsel for the body, some red pheasant rump for the throat, some natural mallard for the beard, natural mallard for the wing, and some red thread with red lacquer as the head. I've applied a good base layer of thread onto my hook, right back to the hook shank. Now I'm going to take a few strands, probably about 10 strands of my red pheasant rump, 
and we'll tie it in and keep it short, tie it in about a quarter of an inch to form a small tail on the fly. Once the tail is tied in, take a strand of your silver tinsel and tie it into the body and this will be used to form the body a little bit later. I now have the tinsel tied in for the body and the nice thing about this silver tinsel is one side is silver and one side is gold and when you actually start rotating the tinsel to form the body it really doesn't matter which side comes up, the silver or the gold, it'll vary the pattern. So let's start wrapping it forward and it just happens that the silver side came up on ours so we'll have a silver pattern this time. And as I mentioned it really doesn't matter, it works, both, works really well with both the silver and the gold. Once the body's tied in, we're going to take a few more strands of our red pheasant rump and we're going to tie it in for the throat. Now make sure the throat, again, is about as long as the tail. It only extends down about a half to a quarter of an inch. And tie it underneath the fly. The next step is to actually tie in the beard. Again, we're going to use our natural mallard and we're going to make it about as long as the body. So when we tie it in, make sure the mallard is actually pointing back up towards the hook. Tie it in underneath and make it about as long as the body. Once the beard's tied in, take a few more, probably double the amount of mallard you use for the beard and tie it in for the wing. And when we tie this wing in, we want to extend it back all the way to the length of the tail. So make sure it extends the whole length of the body and the length of the tail and then tie it in. The last few steps in the fly are quite easy. We're going to take our red thread and finish off the head, making sure it's a nice streamlined head. We'll take our whip finisher and whip finish it, and then we'll take some red lacquer and finish it off with a nice red lacquered head. So there it is, the finished silver smelt. It's one of the various streamer patterns we like to use here at Sport Fishing on the Fly, and it really comes into its own when fishing for trout. now is actually show you a little bit about how we're fishing and what we're using. Obviously we've been talking about the woolly buggers all day long, so that's the fly of choice. We've got the sink, sink tips, full sink lines are our two favorites, and we of course a dry line if they do come off, but what we're having the most luck with today are the full sinks. I've got a clear intermediate sink that I'm casting, and I know Dwayne's casting a fast sink, actually a deep seven fast sink. So what we're doing is we've anchored up right at the uh, creek mouth to the lake, we're casting into the creek, just cast maybe a little bit up into the creek, let it flow through. Once your fly sinks down and gets pulled through the current a little bit, we're starting to retrieve. Now there's two different retrieves you want to use. If you don't have luck with a nice hand over slow retrieve, switch to a quicker retrieve. And we noticed this morning, every time we picked up the retrieve, we caught fish. Best way to work these creek mouths is again, take your time. Take about an hour, start at the very head, anchor up if you can, work the whole flow out into the lake, and then go to the other side and do the same thing. Start in tight again, and work the whole flow out, and you pick up fish all the way through. We've also found we had a few of the bigger fish on in the deeper water, which makes sense. But we'll see how it goes a little later. You know, we got a few hatches coming off, and that's generally how you're gonna start fishing this. Again, full sink lines seem to be the ticket. Sure, they sure hit hard, don't they? Very pretty. Little freight trains. Yeah. There you go. That's a nice fish. Really gobbled it down. That fly right inside. Easy little fella. Oh yeah. Oh, pretty fish. Very nice. They are pretty slender right now, but they're feeding up. Yeah, yeah it's exciting actually catching. You know, they're not that big, but it's a lot of fun. Oh heck yeah! 
Lovely. Keep rolling. Okay, another true true point here is I really sped up the retrieve. I was going 100 miles an hour. I was really pulling it hard. And this guy hit. And it is a bigger fish. So this is kind of what we're expecting today. I'm going to grab the net for this one. Because this is a nicer fish. This is a key point. I found this a couple times over now. The faster my retrieve, the bigger fish are, the bigger the fish are getting. So guess what I'm gonna start doing? Quick retrieves, really quick retrieves. Well thanks for taking me out, Dwayne. That was a lot of fun. Oh, it was a pleasure. It was a great day. It was, and it uh when we first got out here, I thought it was fairly cold. Yeah, it was really cold. We were bundled up pretty good there first thing this morning. <laughs> I had on the sweatpants, I had on this jacket, yeah. sweater. It was cold, but look at the day. It turned out to be a beautiful day. The thing about the Slocan Lake is it is very big water. I mean, it took us how long to tour around the lake today? Well, we took we took our time because we're in and out of creek mouths. You know, we're, we're, we've been out all day, so it's hard to really... Yeah, but how many miles would you think we put in today? I would say we probably put in about 30. Yeah, 30 to 40 yeah. miles looking at the creek mouths. If you do come to Slocan Lake, Make sure you bring a, a, a boat, right? Yeah. You need a motorboat because you won't be able to get around and cover the water that you want to if you don't. Yeah. And also, if you come up here, try to stay at the nice place we stayed at, and that was the Silverton Resort. That Silverton Resort has really nice log cabins. Probably the big one, I would think, would sleep eight to ten. The small one's up to four people. Yeah. Very nice location right on the water. You can anchor your boat right there. And also, what do you find about the fish? You know, I came out here expecting some, some big dolly, some big rainbow. Yeah, well, the fish we caught were all about the same size, except for a few exceptions there. We didn't really get to see them, but yeah. uh, all 14 to, to, say, 16, 18 inches. Yeah, it was fun. You know, we had four and five weight rods, which is a lot of fun. I mean, it was would have been nice to see one of those yeah. big ones, but a guy did just catch one last week, 19-pound rainbow, pounds, yeah. right in those creek mouths we were fishing. Yeah. So, I mean, the opportunity is here. When you do come here, though, take care because it is very big water, and conserve the waters. You know, there's a lot of fish. Just not quite the size that we want yet. We didn't catch them, but they're out here. And we'll see you next time when we take you sport fishing on the fly. To watch all our latest sport fishing on the fly episodes and to order sport fishing on the fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.